So hello everybody, my name is Michael Aberman, um, I'm from Aspecto, and today we're going to talk about um, two interesting things. We're going to talk, well, of course, about open telemetry, but also we're going to talk about um, service mesh. And I think that, um, <clears throat> I think that when we're trying to see, um, when we combine those two things, we're going to see that it, they are interesting because of two reasons. So first thing, both of them can produce telemetry data, right? Both of them claim that can help us to monitor, to observe our, uh, our application. But there is an, an interesting overlap um, that we have between the audience. So a lot of people that are interested in running open telemetry would also use service mesh. And then when you have two things that can work um, good together with one another and they are uh, the same audience, that's, that's a good match. So this is why I was interested in doing this, um, this talk. So um, a bit about what we're going to do here today. So <clears throat> I'm going to really briefly talk about what is service mesh, just to make sure that everybody is aligned. But mostly I'm going to talk about where service mesh meets open telemetry and where open telemetry meets uh, service mesh. A bit about the configurations. And lastly, to talk about um, what's the pros and the cons. Because you know, in any technology decision that you take, there are the good stuff and there is the bad stuff, and we need to talk about both. So, um, really short, service mesh is um, a networking component, part of your infrastructure that eventually responds about um, networking. And mostly I'm going to refer to um, service to service communication. So when your service needs to communicate with another service, you're going to communicate through this mesh. Um, and I'm going to look into three specific things that, that the service mesh can help you with. So the first one is going to be with observability, then routing, and lastly on authentication. And we try to see how we can benefit when you're using um, those things. So um, here is a very, very complex architecture. We have an order service communicating with the user service, then the auth service, and when they communicate with one another, they are going to communicate through a mesh. If you were to go to most um, websites of service mesh, like Istio, like ClickND, um, you would see that they would say, you can get tracing out of the box. Now, imagine going to your service mesh, going to the configuration file, turning on this um, magic tracing um, configuration, and everything just works. That sounds really, really good, and I just want to put it out there how it really works, and what you are getting and what you're not getting. So, um, <clears throat> we can tell the service mesh to generate spans, and here I have a, not here, here I have like a very, very simple application, which I um, ran uh, before we started this talk. And you can see here that um, uh, we, we, I can decide whether to initialize or not initialize uh, the tracer file. So currently what I have here, I have two servers communicating with one another uh, through, through Envoy, um, and open telemetry is not activated. So looking at our um, example here, so I sent a request, now let's go to Jaeger, and let's refresh it, and let's look at our proxy. And you can see here that we can see um, a trace where I have firstly the proxy, then I can see that I'm sending a request to the um, um, order service, but I don't see the request to the user service. So I do have spans, I do have a trace, I just don't have the context. I have a broken drop, uh, context. And this is a truth that I think needs to be told, that if you are just enabling your service mesh to start em emitting spans, you're not going to get tracing. You are going to get traces, but you're not going to get the whole tracing experience that you expect. So what you do need to do is you're going to propagate the context yourself, right? You need to implement open telemetry, you need to instrument the services, and you need to take care of the context propagation. So what I'm trying to say here is that now if, and let me show it um, you know, live so you'll be able to see that it actually works, but if I'll change this parameter to true, meaning that now we will have open telemetry running, true, 
and it would take a second, then our trace will look like a whole trace, right? Now I'll be able to see the, everything that is happening there. So it's just kind of this, uh, this thing that uh, um, some people may think that you can get tracing from a service mesh, but it, it's not actually the case because, well, you really, really need uh, uh, to implement open telemetry. And this is a quote from the Edmond docs saying that, hey, yeah, um, we do have tracing. However, just a tiny little bit, uh, you still have a, a way to go. So what I'm saying here is um, when you are using service mesh, you are going to generate, uh, you are going to implement open telemetry. But the question that I want to ask is, is, is the other way around. If I am using open telemetry, I already implemented open telemetry, will it be beneficial for me to get spans from the service mesh, right? Because I have to have open telemetry, but what am, what am I going to get when I'm going to get spans from, from Istio or Linkerd? So let's take, for at least for my opinion, probably one of the most common use cases that you see with a service mesh, um, and that's routing. We are going to route different requests. Um, when, uh, when we are getting a request, we are going to route it differently, whether it's because we are running an A-B test, a feature flagging, or I'm just running some deployment, a Canary deployment, and I just have two versions of the same service and I need to route those things. So if you think of that from the perspective of um, tracing, when you look at a trace and you see this trace and you ask yourself, well, um, to which version it, it belongs? Is it belong to the version that I already deployed? Is it the one that is going to be deployed? Um, this has, um, it, it can be very critical. Let's say that you are deploying a performance improvement and you expect to see a span that now is taking um, less time and it's not there. It's taking the same time. Well, is it the new version or, or the old version? So the things that you may be able to solve um, using plain open telemetry, like the, using the distro, um, but looking at the um, data that the service mesh produces could be very, very beneficial. So um, this is a trace where we are routing the request and you can see those two traces. The first one is 12 spans, the second one is 13 spans. And here we have no telemetry data that is being omitted from the service mesh. Um, this is plain open telemetry. And when I am going to add uh, um, the service mesh data, and you can see it right here, now it starts to get a bit more details, right? Now if you look at the first request, you can see here that um, here we communicated with service or, uh, uh, order number two and here with, with number one. And this is a great clue for, the, for whoever is going to observe this trace. They're going to understand, okay, now I understand what's happening. Now I understand that there is some kind of decision that there are two versions and I know which version I'm, I'm looking at. And um, let me try and, and, and show it to you. Um, like when it's actually running. So you see here, this is service version number one. And now sending a few requests, two minute request, service two, thank you service two. Um, and now let's look at those. And now we can see it in live. So we can see that there is a difference between them and I can understand the difference quite well. And if I'll click this one and some Thing is happening with the timeline, so I don't know why the timeline is so off, but um, it's making it very, very easy for me to understand that this is a decision that the proxy took and the proxy decided to use now uh, order number two. So um, what I'm trying to say here is uh, without the service mesh data, it would be harder for me to understand this whole trace. Now, another interesting um, use case that we can see in regarding authentication. So when you're talking about routing, um, this is basically saying one, one service is communicating with another and in the middle we had a decision that we took. But service meshes could be even more um, inclusive in our application. When the service mesh is responsible for the authentication, they are actually becoming part of the application. So when the client is calling an API call to, um, to the older service, we want to um, 
authenticate the user before it reaches the other service. Meaning that the service mesh is, although it's an infrastructure and a networking piece, it's now responsible authenticating, which is absolutely a part of the application layer. So um, if I would look at a trace where I'm sending an API call, the service mesh gets that, um, take the call, make sure that the user is valid and only then going through the service, um, the trace would look like so. So I have this a bit of a broken trace, right? I don't have a single uh, root parent to this trace. I'm not sure exactly what's happening here. And I don't know why the uh, user service was called. I just can see it was called. And I can see that after that, we got an API call to the other service. Now, if I'll ask my um, service mesh to emit telemetry data as well, it's going to look um, much better. So looking at it, let me increase that so we can all see. So now I can see the whole story. Now I can see that we sent an API call to get request. We did this async uh, egress thing where we authenticated the user and then we communicated with the rest of the, uh, um, the application. So what I'm trying to say here is even though um, service mesh is the networking path, it's part of the application. It affects how our application behaves. And if we're trying to observe the application and we are trying to say we can look at the traces, we can look at the observability data, and we can understand what's happening in the system, well, it's part of the system, it needs to emit telemetry data so we can understand the whole, the whole thing. Um, so just to sum up the kind of the options that you have with with installing um, the you know telemetry as a whole, you can just go with implementing open telemetry distro. Um, it probably would give you I don't know 90% of what you're looking for, and that's that's great. If you only go with service mesh, you are left with a broken context that's, I guess, not going to take you very, very far. And you are going to have both of them. You are going to be super happy. Now, if I were uh, um, ending this talk right now, we will be super happy, but we need to talk about the real stuff because everything in, in tech comes come with, with a but, right? Because when uh, we are going to introduce um, service mesh and start to, to implement traces, bad stuff are going to happen. So let's, let's talk about those a bit. So I'm going to talk about three things that um, are going to be affected. Cost sampling, well, specifically head sampling, and a bit about the configuration. So the first thing that, that, that we can understand is that we are going to increase the overall cost. When I'm saying cost, I'm not, I don't mean like dollars you need to pay the vendor. I mean the, the overall cost even if you manage it yourself. You are going to generate more spends. And just by introducing at least one more or even two more spans for every um, network activity you're going to have, this could sum up to significant cost. Now, um, when you're in, in, uh, increasing the cost, you need to ask yourself, okay, what value did I get? So if the value that you're getting is significant, yeah, go for it, it makes sense. So I saw companies um, implementing um, um, Istio traces and the only thing that they could learn from that is what's the extra um, in latency that Istio introduced. And, and that's fine, that's not tons of value. I'm not sure it worth the cost, well, depend on them. But when you start to really do things that like, uh, like routing, like retries, like back off, like authentication, then you need, really need the service mesh to tell you what happened in order to understand the traces. And then I think the cost does worth it. But, it's every deployment, every company need to take this decision for themselves. So this is um, the first thing that uh, I think it's the bad news that we need to think about. The second one is regarding head sampling. So if you are using head sampling, you are kind of used to that the open telemetry receiving the first um, decision once they're getting the request. Talking about the service mesh, the service mesh, service mesh now is um, um, before your application and the, the service mesh is going to take the decision for you. So if you were writing a code and you said, okay, in my service, I want to not sample uh, health check traces. It's not, it's not interesting. Now the service mesh 
well, depending on the service mesh, but most of world service meshes that I know, they are only going to give you the possibility to define what percentage of uh, traffic you want to sample. So if you are relying on um, head sampling and then you introduce some service mesh that may go to waste. And you can start to, to, to solve it. You can start say, okay, um, I won't uh, do like uh, um, um, parent-based uh, sampling. I won't look at whatever the service mesh decided, but that's going to, to take you to a whole kind of bad experience and, and, and a lot of work that you need to, to, to do in order to make it actually work. So this is something that out of the box, I think, doesn't really work. Um, so it is another, another area that you need to, to consider. And the last thing that I would mention regarding uh, the bad news, bad news at least, is that when we are working with, with open telemetry, we want everybody to work as we expect with open telemetry, with you know, the latest uh, specification and follow the semantic convention and use OTLP. But the truth to be told is that that's not always the case. So, I took Envoy as an example, just because many service meshes uses Envoy uh, uh, behind the scenes. Um, so Envoy still doesn't support OTLP. They do have a pull request for that, um, but it's still not merged. Um, so currently, if you're using it, uh, you need to export the data through uh, Zipkin, through uh, Jaeger, which is fine. Um, but they are not using um, W3C context propagation. So now. You implemented the open telemetry in, I don't know, 100 services using W3C, and now you said, okay, I want to turn on tracing in Istio, and now you're in a problem because you need to change it to B3. So it's not something that you can't solve, it's just a lot of management that you will need to do. It's a lot of changes that you need to do. So those things, I guess that in next year talk, I'll probably say, hey, we're all good. Everybody is now aligned on the, on the uh, W3C, but, but it's a, at this point of time, it's, it's a bit annoying. And also the, the semantic convention is not always spot on, which could be uh, um, a bit annoying. So if I want to um, kind of sum up what, what I'm trying to say is, any component that is part of the application, any component that is affecting how the application um, is running, it's worth monitoring, it's worth to observing. When we look at a trace, we think, we think this trace um, is going to represent what really happened, and to do that we need as much data as, as we can get. And I think there is something interesting with service meshes because most of the company that I saw, um, they use an open term to distro implemented in their services. And this is kind of the first time that we see something that is not part of the application code that is started to emitting telemetry data. And I think, um, and, and the panel uh, uh, discussed it a bit, that we're going to see more and more components start to emit telemetry data as we go. Um, I don't know, databases and message brokers and queues and those kind of things, they are going to follow it sometime. And we're going to see probably the same kind of problem that we see with service meshes. So we can kind of look at it as, it, as a community and learn from that um, what we need to do in order to guide those who are going to emit data that we're not going to have those uh, same um, problems or, or mistakes again. So, um, Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'd love to, to try and answer. Hold on, Mike's coming. Uh, first of all, thank you. Um, I, I did the same similar exercise that you did, and, and I, I came to the same conclusion, but I always been surprised on how Kiali is able to create the traces of the box without any hotel implementation. So you have the context propagated. So I've been digging, 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 and I have never understood how Kiali was able to do that. Mm -hmm. Have you found... Which was... project? I didn't get that. Kiali. Um, so I'm not that familiar with that, um, and it is very interesting to see. Um, and I'll, I'll try to dig up, and, and maybe I'll come with a conclusion. Because if, if there is like a magic button you can click and get good traces, like with a context, that's a great offering. Anyone else? Questions? All 
All right. Well, thank you very much. Big round of applause. Thank you.